Welcome to another episode of The Adventures of Danny and Mike, wherein the fellas discuss t-shirt guns, golf talk, and the scungilly cleanse. Now play the music, Cloudy. say something uh do you believe in the paranormal do i believe in the paranormal i've watched a lot of x-files okay well i'm just i'm just wondering like I, what like what like ghosts yeah like ghosts how about like uh banshees i believe in ghosts i've seen ghosts i feel like we were haunted with a ghost on a on an on an adventure once you that, know? that ghost was that that was a lust it was actually a ghost of multiple small frog ghosts that squished together into a bigger frog when you think about all the murder dan did and that's the... Uh... I don't want to relive or revisit that time of my life. Okay. All, okay. All, all dead frogs aside. So you do. You did just mention time of my life, and you do have a guitar in your hands. And I beg of you. I beg of you. Do not play do it. Do not play it. Danny? May have been a bad idea to hook up the guitar for this episode. That's if, what if God was one of us. Okay. No, I just asked because uh, I was thinking about setting up a... Uh, a Ouija board? No, surveillance camera. You can get in, it for like 30 bucks infrared? now. Infrared? Infrared? I don't know. Should I get infrared? Yeah, you should get the infrared. I just played the I played the lick that you wanted me to play, and I got nothing from well, it. Well, if you didn't notice, we were both saying do not play the lick. Well, I thought you asked me to. Welcome to the Adventures of Danny and Mike. To my right, Mr. Danny Tamborelli. Hello. And to his right, and directly in front of me, horizontal, no, I mean vertical, Mr. Michael C. Morona. For a change. How are you, gents? He's in oh, yoga no, pose. Jeremy. You're in a you're sitting Indian style, which I like to call yoga pose. Right. I like uh, the uh, the Indian style. That means that you like the couch. Uh, I'm comfortable enough to take my shoes off and put yep. my feet on it. It'd be nice if you're hovering above the couch a little bit, though. Now it would be. <laughs> yeah, there would be something she's, paranormal she about sleeps, that. Journey. That's what I'm saying. She sleeps on top of her sheets, about three feet above her sheets. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> So how are you, gents? It's man, it is such a uh, a wonderful day outside. Yeah, can we have podcasting outside today? I mean, it's not a bad idea. We could go to the park. Can we have a bubble studio? You know what I really enjoy is those. Um, there's like uh, golf or billiards commentators have these like cups around their mouth so they can speak directly into the microphone. Oh, very quiet. Do you oh. know what I'm talking about? <laughs> they have these. They have these cops on top of their microphones that let everything go like this so they can talk and not disturb the players. And I was just thinking if we had <laughs> had three of those, we could just face away from the wind and talk about it's something. It's not about it. It's called the NPR effect. Sweaty balls. Yeah. Oh, boy. The NPR. But uh, I've always, I, I th- feel like we should, probably should do an episode like that where we're, we're kind of golf commentators. We're viewer supported. Yeah. <laughs> and Michael C. steps up to the microphone. Uh, he's going to give some insight on uh, his work day yesterday. Uh, that coworker of mine who I mentioned who uh, has eaten a lot of oysters at an oyster eating <laughs> contest also tells stories at the moth sometimes. So I'll, I'll, uh, oh, yeah. I'll hope to catch him. And I just hope those two get together as a, is this the same... a haunting story about an oyster eating contest. Is this the ranch water guy? No, no. Wow. But they work together. Oh, okay. We are so the ranch water guys. So collectively, now. they can have. <laughs> we did change. Yeah, changed uh, our text thread to the is ranch. That, is that the prairie oysters guy? Man, you got a lot of guys. The the um, uh, I'm wondering if we can maybe yeah get those two in a room, do a pod with them, maybe drink some ranch water. I don't know, just spitballing. Possible. Or in the back of a truck. Spitballing. I'm don't, just don't spitball around here. I'm this is a nice new studio. It is. It's not. It's. I feel feeling good about this. It is uh, equally as sweaty as the old one. We're okay, Jeremy. No, it's not that bad. We're okay. I mean, no. look at Dan. I don't see any beads yet. It is early in the podcast, but it there's no beads. It is early in the podcast. There's no beads. Yeah. yeah. It, feels, it feels climate controlled in here, so. Does it feel? It's all in your head. <laughs> Does it feel climate controlled? If you controlled? do that, he's going to play a song. You know this. Mm. Okay, maybe not. This is good. Can I no, feel? see, I got to keep you guys on your toes. I'll hit stingers when I want to hit stingers. Basically. That's what this is going to be. You know what? <laughs> you know? Like that's, that was like the perfect time to do that. Let me, let, hold on. Let's try this out. Thank uh, you for teaching us. The, the, what the, so there was a dog at uh, 
gas station. He just uh, drank a little puddle of gas, ran around in a circle for like 10 minutes, nonstop, just chasing his tail, around in a circle, around in a circle. And then? And then he just fell down. You know what happened to him? What? Ran out of gas. <laughs> I, I was going to say... that kind of works, I was right? going to say he was a hot dog. Oh. That could work. I think we could yeah. invent that one. Yes. Dan- yeah. Danny is our five octaves up Seinfeld bass. If you had like a full on instrument with like drums on the feet, you could do the. You know I'm a I mean? fan. I'm a fan of one man bands. I like watching one man bands. It's just that often you find them in the subway. Yeah. And then the acoustical nature of the environment tends to invade upon you a little. Hey. Oh, I thought that I was trying to be the one man band. That take it, wasn't. take it easy there, <laughs> Dick Van. Dyke. I mean, that's part of the allure, right? Is that it sounds amazing down there. That everyone sounds good in the subways. I've definitely seen one in the Bedford. The acoustics stop. are nice. Maybe and we should pod down there. Oh, can, if we don't have, can a we have the golf? Can we I have the golf commentator cups yes, over should. our microphones? Yes. Hold on, here comes a local. It is bound for Canarsie. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> um, this woman just walked in front of me, clearly crop dusting the entire platform. <laughs> I, I think this is called projection. What Dan just said—that's projection. You cannot tell. When a woman is crop dusting. I can tell when people are crop dusting. Women are people, Dan. Can you? So I can tell. How can you tell? Because you just know. I you, twitch. You just know? I just know. What, is it, what do you get a feeling in your gut? I do, I do. I've got, I've got crop dust R. Do you have a crop dusting spidey sense? <laughs> I do. My penis tingles. Okay. Every time. <laughs> Gotta go. Uh, <laughs> well, the... Uh, I think we should pod from Subway, maybe. I think that would be a good idea. I don't know if I like that idea. Put a tip, I, like, tip jar I, like, out. I like the I prefer, confines of the studio. I prefer podcasting outside in the park on a day like today. It would be. It would be nice. Yeah. We'll work up to that. I think that'll be, I mean, just have guests swing by, just have one microphone, whoever wants to talk on it, they can. This sounds like the Sheila Booth uh, video thing. She, she, Shia, Shia LaBeouf? Sheila Booth yeah. video thing. He will not divide us. <laughs> I'll, I'll work on getting him on. He's all by himself in a cabin in the mountains. Yeah, we should go there. LeBoot, we could he wants to be by himself. That's why he's there. So he, we would not be welcome. I'm there. pretty sure we could write up questions on big pieces of paper and wad them up and toss them in the window. <laughs> <laughs> you have to put a brick in them or something, though. I got the sniffles, by the way. Is that an acoustical brick? What was the What? Is that an acoustical brick that you would throw through the window? Or? It'd have to be something. Something with a little weight to it. Maybe we'll put, give him a t-shirt. Put a t- wrap, a, wrap a Danny and Mike t-shirt around the note. I know a guy who's got one of those t-shirt guns. There you go. I could, I could, uh, we, we just could make figured it, it out. I, I'd always wondered that. When when you work at the ballpark, do you take your t-shirt gun home with you? Is it like a, a cop with, his, off du- a with his off-duty revolver? No, it's like I had my, you know, I it, something happened right in front of me, and all I had with me was my t-shirt gun, so I <laughs> saved the day. It's funny you guys don't know that at point-blank range, a t-shirt gun will, you know... Uh, Stun you. <laughs> Rest in peace, no, Maud we'll, Flanders. It will just, it will just make. Oh. Rest in peace. <laughs> Wait, what? Ned Flanders' wife was killed yeah. by oh, yeah. shirt gun. <laughs> Did you? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Jer- oh, yeah. Jer- Jeremy was like, "Wait, what? Like Wait, someone who? like seriously died? Like who? someone that you oh, knew?" Okay. No, for some reason I was thinking of, I was thinking of Marge. I don't know. You said Ned uh, Maud Flanders, and I just thought Maud Marge. Flanders and Marge Simpson sound nothing like Jeremy. I'm but with the lights out. You. With the lights <laughs> out? Well, it depends on how high up you go. Good call. Anywho. Anywho. So, uh, it's spring. We're potting inside. You have allergies. I have allergies. Dan has a guitar. Dan has a guitar. I have comic books. And also... Go ahead. No. I don't know why you gave me a guitar. This is like... I'm trying... I am such a fiddler. I'm trying so hard not to fiddle on this thing. Because... Fiddler on LaBeouf? That, I'm, <laughs> I'm saying we get short film, Fiddler on LaBeouf? Burn. Uh, Burn. Yeah. Anyway. So what else What else you guys want to chat no, about? No, no, no. You had an agenda before Dan interrupted you. So what were you about to say? Yeah, you were about you to say some, some weird shit. paranormal thing that yeah. you were talking well, the about. Well, the whole, I just thought it was, I found these uh, uh, cameras on Amazon that you can buy for like 430 bucks. And they, you can find almost anything. Record, yeah, and they record shit. And my thought was that, what if I found a, what if I had a ghost? But definitely get the infrared one. I have to look. Yeah, because that's what they use, right? That's the sweep they do, infrared sweep. I don't. What are we talking? Are we talking predator? EVP or something? I can't afford predator. That's the the, security. You get a capture one one. that gets the audio, right? Yeah. EVP something. EVP. Yeah. Yeah. 
Wow, you guys have both been searching the same well, security. No, cameras. I've had a cut. Well, I've recently, actually, this weekend. That's weird that you're saying talking about it. Is that uh, I blocked out an entire bed and breakfast for the wedding. Yeah, in Bethlehem, PA, at this place. That's like a crazy. Don't tell anybody. Yeah, it's like because they'll crazy make pilgrimages. <laughs> uh, it's like this old castle sort of thing. Oh, what do you call and, it? Shady, uh, shady maples. Not shady maples. Oh God. man, I wish I could go to a wedding. We could go. No, we, we got. We, we have, have to, to do a go pilgrimage. to. But we could do a ten. A it would be a ten-hour wedding, so you could have two servings. No, it doesn't <laughs> matter. Meetings. No, that's if if you want to do that, you have to go out and come back in. There, you got to go out and come back in. <laughs> it's like but, the Staten Island Ferry, as I said. But I mean. I don't know if anyone can handle 10 hours in Shady Maple. I mean, that's... This would be a good challenge. Yeah. It's not a good challenge. I mean, that's Mike is the pizza king. Mike is the... I don't want I don't want Mike to be the, king. Med the king. Med king. pork chop king, because pork chop kings <laughs> die young. Their reign, their reign is limited, <laughs> unfortunately. Limited reign. Actually, I'm waiting for the blood yeah. test results to come back. This is great. I went and had my blood taken on Friday, and I'll breathe another day i guess and check for those results tomorrow and then we'll see if i ever have to change your diet we'll see if i ever eat out pastor again (laughs) if i ever have a taco Uh, in my life i'm looking forward to these these results i was trying to google something that i read that somebody ate something weird and died this past week do you guys remember any of this because the reason i break it up is because somebody um ate a vinyl record back to ghosts but they haven't died yet back to the paranormal i guess if uh, there was some sports bet, and they lost the bet. And they what said, was the record? the record? What was the record? <laughs> that I don't know. Maybe yeah, like I mean, if it was Patty back in black. Oh, there you go. Well, what what's the most a, easily what if digestible it was a mama's record? And a papa's Paranoid. Record. Paranoid is the easiest record to eat. <laughs> well, I th- feel like it should be food themed, so it's like uh, oh, weird all Yankee cream. Uh, what is the uh, Disraeli gears? No. Yeah, that's fresh named, cream. That's named after uh, fresh cream. A British prime minister. It's not uh, <laughs> edible. Right. Yeah. Okay. Well, fresh cream is edible. There's a band called Fresh Cream. No, no that was Cream's one of their albums. Records, one of them is called Fresh Cream. There is a band called Thunder Thunder. Two, three. I uh, know. I've always wanted wow. to. Just you say can't two, eat three, that. Four. Wow. I uh, know. Well, this place is haunted. That I, I found out after the fact. Oh, after you blocked out all your reservations. Uh, so two people, two people are gonna get rooms that have like weird things happen. Like a weird shadowy figure pops out. Two people and, in the podcast studio and, right now that aren't you? Uh, I don't know I if mean, I can do that anymore. <laughs> we want we want two double beds so you somebody want, else can get uh, some, <laughs> some the experience. Uh, and the other one is like the old mistress of the lady. Her face shows up in the mirror apparently. Oh wow. Yeah. And then that brought me down like another sick path of looking at like haunted hotel stuff and there's a place in upstate New York that I can't think of the name of right now, which would be a good fact check, um, It that has, you have to sign a waiver. Oh, like wow. Being like, this place is haunted, and you're here for thrills. And I don't know if it's fake or not, but it feels it feels like it'd be genuine enough. You all, it's like an old man. You all remember when we went to that... Um that abandoned asylum. What was yes. that in uh, Nyack? Where was it? That was, uh, yeah, somewhere up there off of the Palisades Park. I thought it was off the Palisades somewhere. Um, I worked with my cousin on a documentary about an institution uh, in uh, South Central PA called Penhurst. Yep. Which yeah. was like uh, the subject of a, a Supreme Court case. It went all the way to the Supreme Court about how uh, people classified by the state as deficient need to still be able to access their rights and not be warehoused in institutions where they get bathed with hoses. Yeah. And there was a lot of sexual abuse happening and a lot of other things. There were also some nice stories. We interviewed a, a husband and wife who met while they were in there and married. And oh, they wow. Were so, they were so sweet. They were really sweet people. They were people that worked there. They didn't... No, they were they were patients there. Patients that met there and then got married when they got out. To each other. But I know I yeah. did it. It's so, crazy. And it, do you know what they were in for? Oh, it was still quite haunted. It was still really creepy there. You know, the place has been shuttered for a long time, and it's always trespassing. And But, you know, we talked about this before, and it's now a haunted house. What is? Oh, yeah. Penhurst. Yeah, Penhurst is a, it's like a Halloween attraction thing that they do now. What'd you write on that index card? Just notes. I would like to see them. Well, wow, wow, Dad! It's uh, it's nothing about Pinhurst. Just hold it up. It's just notes. You know, it's just notes I'm going to take throughout the podcast. Nice. Keeping up. Is like, an old thing now? That's a new thing. Yeah, 
you know, trying to keep track of you guys, make sure you're I didn't, in line. I didn't know that Penhurst was uh, an attraction, but it, I'm sure it has a lot of paranormal there. The, it, may, it may be a different one, but we did talk about one around the Gethard episode that, that was uh, turned into a, a haunted house. This might be a different one, but Penhurst is also a haunted house is what I'm trying to say. Hmm. So, yeah. Anyway, guys, anyway. it's springtime. Let's talk about ghosts. <laughs> we like to get our holidays in six months early. We can just talk about the ghost of Jesus. I mean, who the heck I mean, else true. pushed that boulder out of the foyer of the tomb? That's right. Who was strong enough? Gerard's first Easter? It was, Not to change the subject? It but. was G's first Easter. Um, he had a fever, unfortunately, which I tweeted about and people people received well. Um, it's nice that people on Twitter care about wish a, your baby care as about well. a baby. Mm. He, uh, yeah, he just looked like sweaty and uncomfortable. Which you know what, kind of like Danny in a podcasting situation. <laughs> hey, but not right now. Is it, is but it, but Danny has more hair. <laughs> is that a? Uh, uh, is is it the first sort of sickness for him? Like, is he had? A, he's been no, he's been sick before, but this was the first like. 9:45 p.m. trip to the drugstore to search for the baby uh, Pedialyte. The the no like no. the the baby versions of the medicines because the infant ones right. are for like the child ones are for two to six. Right, right. So you have to get the ones that are specifically for baby, and then those are ten dollars mm-hmm. at least, if not more. Um, so they I felt jack like you I, up because the the baby is 9:45 at night. What am I going to do? Is it, yeah. the place is about to close yeah. and. Uh, the kid looks uncomfortable, like Danny in a podcast. Um, no, Gosh. he was just, so his temperature came down, but he was at 102 and change. So we called the Jeez. pediatrician wow. and all that. On Sunday, Saturday, on Saturday he was a little, uh, and Monday he wasn't as as hot. And he, I think he's normal now. That was a mid, mid-statement yawn. You get tired of being a dad. I, as a dad, I'm loving <laughs> naps, man. Yeah? Yeah. I'm, I don't think I took a nap on Easter, but I could have next to him in the playpen. Yeah. It's not that big a playpen. <laughs> I, was out, I was outside of it looking in. Well, if you cut leg holes. That's true. Almost anything could be a playpen. Yeah. But I guess then he might escape. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. you just cut them right to your your legs. Right. So, so not, it, no, no gaps. So it's just, so he can get his arms out and you can get your legs out? Oh, it's like handling the nuclear fissile material. It's, yeah. If, if you're not a, uh, a hugging type dad, it's the perfect scenario. So there'd be a, a layer of <laughs> a layer of uh Let's see, you have an ice cold between Do you, you have an lead. ice cold dad? Does your dad Does your dad not like tolerate you? hugs? <laughs> no, I know I love him. I I I know. I love him all this the time. This is a figurative father and son. I feel like there are less people in the world who are fathers now that are probably less like, you know, you know, there's this great- hard than like your grandpa's or like your your dad would tell you. So uh, my my grandfather didn't say I love you until his deathbed. And you're like, oh shit. And then he right. was he was talking he to was, somebody else, but was, I passed he- by in front of him, so I intercepted it. <laughs> <laughs> I just feel like there aren't as many salty vets in the world like that. Yeah, we need another yeah. Vietnam to thing out there, ranks. <laughs> oh, let's hope We're not. That way. Let's hope not. How about um, criminal intent, which is a, a subject I always like to go back to. Okay, uh, I love watching emotionally distant men get broken down mm-hmm. in this show. And there's one episode where Cole Meany, who you refer, remember as Chief O'Brien from Star Trek The Next Generation, and playing many Irish stereotypes in between, okay, uh, plays like a lawyer. And he's like, it, eventually it comes out, he's a judge or a lawyer or some shit. Eventually it comes out, he's like, the, the wife is like, he never even wanted to hold you when you were a child. <laughs> and you you knew you 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 knew the whole time that Colmini was the bad guy. That's Seinfeld esque. That's pretty good. Woof. Yeah. But yeah, you knew he was you knew he was <laughs> yeah, a bad yeah, guy, yeah. and it was that also was because instantly. he never hugged his kid. For the listener, if you just see the uh, you would you would love to see Michael C. Moreau's face right now. My he eye really, rolls. Really hates the fact that I have a guitar right now, and I didn't even ask for it. I didn't hand it to him. I did, so it's all my fault. But I had other ideas for it, not for this. Part. Oh, you thought we were going to bang people over the head with it? <laughs> no. The listener I'm going to have to find out later, but it's going to involve us all in music. Anyway. Uh, my, he didn't hug his son. Yeah. Yeah. Not me. I think my dad had a bit of that. My dad, uh, let me bring down the room real quick. I don't think him and his dad got along very well. 
You think because he was a veteran, you know, was in the war, he was away. Which which WW two? Yeah, my um, was it WW two? Yeah, I guess it had to be maybe Korea. Uh, and uh, yeah, I think there was a lot of maybe that's maybe that's explains a lot, but yeah, there was a lot of. I just remember when I was in the hospital. As a kid, that's when the, the, the... You would hold up the hug and kiss sign and nothing would happen. Right. I would just be standing there alone. <laughs> oh, applause, the applause yeah. sign. Like, Please. <laughs> no, my dad, my, my dad loves me. I know that. But uh, the, it was more of like there was some disconnect between his dad and him. And I think his dad was really hard on him and all the brothers. And I think that's something that's sort of... I don't think it's dying out because there's still asshole dads everywhere. But like there is that sort of weird like thing that I think is lessening where it's where it's like it's not cool to be emotional towards your kid right Wait, wait, it, wait, but wait, I, wait. it is or it isn't make up your mind no I, I believe it's not it, it is cool to, it is good it's good to, to be a, a dad who shows you know the range of emotions and can can be you know good hearted and stern and all that shit but and not just one sided like I feel like his dad was you know what I mean which, which is, is just very a hard, stern hard, hard ass all the time yeah Anyway, so that was a, a, just a thought <laughs> to bring down the room. Now Danny is really sweating. Uh, Mike, I'm not sweating at all, dude. It's not bad. Dude, not there's bad. a sheen on your forehead right now. Not your true. forehead is sheeny. That's not true. It is sheeny. I have there's, some. It's completely dry. What, come over here and touch it? Maybe it's oil then. I can't tell. I mean, I am half guinea, so. Lord. Okay, let's just not insult anybody. <laughs> And here's uh, a song I'm about it. It's a Matchbox 20, guys. Okay. I don't think we legally can put that on there. We're insulting yes, we can. music. I know. <laughs> Listeners. Who cares about that band? Yeah. I can't help it. Sometimes they just, they just happen. There's nothing that I want less than to play ma- Matchbox 20. What about Three Doors Down? Uh, uh, I don't know if I can do that. I I don't know how to even think about playing that Superman song. So then, Sorry, guys. yeah. So then you, yeah, but that's even a thing. Well, that's you know, I, I, I it's not like I had a, an affinity towards the band Matchbox Twenty. It's just a catchy song. It gets stuck in your head. Remember a couple episodes ago we talked about Scoop Bagels. Yes, yeah, and bagels. how people who do that are monsters. No. Well, Danny was on pro Scoot Bagel. For yeah, a, I am on. I still am. I didn't think you were on anti Scoot Bagel. For uh, to revisit, when you scooped bagels for people, did they tip you better? No, it's a preference, right? So it's like, just what they. Uh, so it's just like a useless step. Here's no, our product. Not, it's not no, a useless no, step. Here's our product. You're, this is how our product it, comes. No, no, Michael. <laughs> Michael C. This the is bagel how, apologist. This is, this is no bagel apologist. It's it. It works on many levels. Okay, the biggest level, the most important thing is it keeps whatever you've put on the bagel from squinching out. Yeah, yeah, from squinching out. So if you're you just in sell a car, taco shell, just tell us sell a taco shell. If you're in a, if you're in a car and you're eating on the way to work, it's much easier to have a scooped out bagel than it is to have regular bagel with cream cheese. What's happened to us? What's happened to us? There's, Did there's we no, forget what, about what, is it? what eating meant and just it's, it's something to just, be done just, between exit eight and exit twelve? I mean, I'm a smoothie guy every day now. What do you want from me? I can't give you any insight how, onto. But this. how about a sensible lunch and dinner? I had a sensible lunch already. Would you have quinoa and vegetables? Same thing. I have every Tuesday through Friday for Fucking lunch. Hey, dude, how does anyway. that feel inside? I mean, I haven't gained any weight back in a year. I'm about to do the cleanse again next week. We're inching towards eight, the cleanse. Are you, in another eight days. Wait, are you shedding for the on wedding? On Monday. Are you, tra- are you shedding, shedding, you shedding for the wedding? That. Somebody shedding, shedding for the, the wedding. wedding. Don't say that. Is that, a, is that an actual no. term? That I didn't, no, I didn't no, make it up. No. I did not make it up. No, I'm not shedding for the wedding. I'm shredding for the no. wedding. <laughs> are you going to DJ your own wedding so you'd be too busy to, to kiss Kate and stuff like that? Is it going to be like not a dais but a DJ booth? <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm not listening. I'm shredding. <laughs> yeah, you, you clearly are not shredding because you're not making any kind of guitar face at all. Oh well, clearly that's not the beauty feeling of, it. That's the beauty of podcasting. Kids. For the listener, he's not making any kind of guitar face. Also, oh. for the listener, the reason I brought that up about bagels is that I finally had one. First scoop bagel of my life, and I thought it was fine. It's like drinking a diet coke, right? It's a little bit like the ba- it's like a it's like an imitation bagel. 
It's, oh. But but it was fine. I didn't really miss the uh, the carbs of the, you know. Well, then you know what you have to do, Jeremy. Next time you go, you have to get a half and half. Just say I want half of it's good. No, <laughs> what? I'm not saying that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, That's yeah. Let me thing. get a, a bagel with uh, that the scallion top, cream cheese. And, and you know, half can scoop. you do me something? Uh, can you do a little top top half scoop? Top half. I don't want the bottom <laughs> scoop. I need the top scoop. But that's better than half of the bagel scooped on both sides. Hollowed out like the hol- <laughs> a hollow torus that is a really ass- interesting shape you right. know what I mean? of the bagel, the donut. Is that what that, that your that's your analogy for a scoop bagel, the hollow torus? A torus, T O R U S, is that. And when shape. you're really in yes. a rush, you just take all the insides out and you stick it on top of a, a sheet of cream cheese and you eat that. You know what I have done before? And you is mix you the just, cream that's cheese. That's an inside out scoop. I at Famous Familia, I used to make in, I used to make my Sicilians into inside outs. I would peel them apart and turn them over so I could eat them like a sandwich. Wow! Yeah, I was a sick guy. Familia, yeah. That's ridiculous. Hey, it worked. It worked like a charm. You can ask several of my high school classmates uh, who are alive. I never did anything like that. I never tried to add sand like you when, the way like KFC even- like would make chicken with. Bacon and chicken and cheese on it. And it's I, a chicken bun. Like, I did I've have, never like I had the double Dunkin stacked Donuts. like that. I had ever. the Dunkin' Donuts sandwich and ordered it and said, can you give me uh, two donuts instead of bread? And he said, okay. Wow. He cut a bre- he cut a donut in half and gave oh, me that as the bread. Holy shit. My God, that is It was disgusting. also in New Jersey. I would not of try course. this in my home state. Well, plus now you can't, you know, like even thinking about that gives, my, gives me heart pains. Mm. Just a, don- a donut bun actually they do make i mean kfc's yeah they're like that's their whole business plan let's do i you know i really don't know i don't understand their business plan because it seems to be like the cigarette companies you know what i mean get them hooked young but they keep dying early so it's right. you, you it's a very you need to always hook more people all the time yeah the the um yeah man that's exactly what they want you to think it's better than domino's domino's has the uh, we're the worst but hey you still eat our pizza I can't believe that. I think that. Domino's, Domino's ads are probably, that that whole 180 about face of them being like, yeah, we're pretty shitty, but we're trying to get better. And here's some incentives. We're shitty, but we're you. renovating our restaurants. We're shitty, but you still remember us, and we are a bit better than Pizza Hut. It, in a place like New York City, how can Papa John's... Diarrhea cardboard transplants. And, it's and, all transplants. I mean, but my buddy, shit. my buddy Joe is from Long Island, and he orders, yeah, that's Papa so John's, and he says he likes it because he doesn't have to have any human contact. You can just order online, pay online. But you can, I mean, yeah, I think I, st- I think a man you, still has to hand yeah, you the pizza. I was going to say you still have to, yeah, unless he has a slot. Does he have a pizza slot? Not that big. <laughs> I mean, I guess. <laughs> Why does he get the extra large that's, pizza? I'm just like thinking, like you know, something. That's you could have width, one installed. Something that's the whole width of the door. You can have one. Yeah, you can have one installed that just no, says Dutch door. Dominoes only. Dutch door. Dutch door with a little no, space you, in the middle. Well, you know how like newspapers will give you the boxes when you live in suburbia for them to deliver, for them to deliver the newspapers. You know, there's a box that says the Herald right. Journal, Journal right. Courier yeah, Digest yeah. Gazette Magazine Courier, and then they know to put it in there. So maybe you could get like a sponsored mm-hmm. pizza box mail slot and then yep. they would know it could have the dumb colors. No, nah, I, I can't do it. I'm still going to stay true to Carmine, even though he's probably relaxing on a beach somewhere, hunched over, counting money. That's a weird counting money riff. <laughs> you should have done the uh, little dire straits or something. Uh, anyway. Well, uh, speaking of uh, small business owners, I did want to shout out... Um, Sunnies in Red Hook, they have a website. Sunnies Forever? Called sunniesforever.com, and if you are so inclined to, to donate, uh, they need some help to, to keep that bar alive. It's uh, one of Mike. Mike can speak on it better. For the rest of the podcast, for the listeners, I'm matching all donations to Sunnies Forever uh, for as long as we keep recording today. It's, I don't know how we're going to keep it's, track uh, of that. that. That sounds like something Donald Trump would say. Wait, we're not, we're not streaming this live right now? No, I haven't cooked that up yet. Shit. Uh, but anyway, sunniesforever.com, and it will help keep this amazing piece of history in Red Hook alive. You guys got to go there. It's a perfect time of year to visit. I actually wanted to go see Bluegrass now. I had no idea. Yeah, Saturday nights. Yeah. Maybe we uh, could be friends outside of this podcast and go see some Bluegrass. What Challenging. Do you I'll go to Conover Street anytime, man. Maybe pick up a uh, DeFonte's for lunch. Some sandwiches. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah. I haven't been there in so long. 
Caitlin's banned you from several no, locations. She, in no, <laughs> no, no one bans me Have from anything, the man. Cleanse? I do it on my own. Is there a, <laughs> tried is there the a DeFontes yes? cleanse. It's just hot salad. <laughs> If you can eat hot salad. Scungeels. If you could just eat scungeels for two weeks. It's it's good for Lent. It's good for everything. Uh, God. No, guys. I, I do this on my own. I changed on my own. It was nice to have a, a, a friend to help. But now they're dead. You ate them. No, no, no. She's alive and well. Okay. We're going to get married. So At a haunted... House. No, no, no. The, At the Shady Maple. Well, actually, Asylum. actually, the, the truth be told, the place that we're doing it at probably has haunted everything because it's a, it's an old steel factory. Mm. And lots of people have fallen into those. Well, we're waiting here you know in Allentown. <laughs> but they closed Shady Maples down. That's in Lancaster County. That's and different. the Union people. Can you have buses that shuttle us there after the wedding? Last wedding I went to had a really good party bus. So a shuttle bus was great. It was it was an actual bus. It mm. was a school bus. Oh yeah, it was huge. Uh, Brendan did that, I think. Yeah, he had he had school buses. But you know what? When we tried to get on the school buses, we we're like, oh, Let's I just see gotta... some ID. I need mean, to see some yeah, ID. No, I just got to. Uh, are, are there going to be more buses? And they were like militant about it. No, get no. on this bus. These are the three buses. If you That's don't get it. these buses, yeah, you're going to take a lift. You've, you got to really, I you know. I have patience, and I have a lot of patience sometimes. Other times I have no patience at all, like with bank tellers. But people who are working at a wedding, yeah, bartenders, people who work serving you food, whenever you're working and other people are celebrating, you got to have sympathy for those people. And Yeah, absolutely. Because they're used to dealing with drunks. Um, well, I would agree okay, with not that. Okay, Bob's, not would, Bob's I furniture. Would, I would all. agree with that mostly, but uh, I had my... 10 year, probably, yeah, I guess it's 10 years. It was a long time ago now. Shit. It was our 10 year anniversary. <laughs> this is the moment in the podcast where Danny realized he's I'm old. I'm old. Uh, the guy who was serving us food at the place that, for our 10th uh, anniversary re- of class, what? Reunion, of what? Reunion, reunion. High school reunion. reunion. High school reunion. Yeah. Was someone from the, was someone from the grade above us. Uh, and he looked miserable the whole time. I was like, you picked to work it, man. Wow. But well, I don't know if you, you want to do that. Why would you want to be the guy you who can't always get assigned the, the schedule? Right. Nah, this kid, Mike. <laughs> Whoa, out. dude, calling him out. I'll Shout call out, out to Mike. Shout out to Mike. I didn't know that you would do that, but uh, he's just—it's one of those kids. You're like, really? You do? Why would you? Why would you be? You doing got that? so much going for you, Mike. You—you uh, you no, got that scholarship. I'm sure, out of- I'm sure he's doing plenty of stuff. This is a long time ago, and I'm not trying to make it seem like shitty, but he like made it a, a purpose to be like sort of like. Uh, the whole night, like Debbie Downer. It's like, dude, understood. We're all we all party together in high, high school parties, and you're serving me chicken franchise. Deal with it. I'd like a second, please. Mm. This so. was before you started drinking smoothies, obviously. Oh, way before I started drinking smoothies. I got very drunk at that. Was it top ten, Jeremy? No, he wasn't, I wasn't there. there. But was it top ten? No, no, I didn't, it wasn't. I didn't, I didn't it wasn't. Get the memo, no, no, no. So. no, and it didn't happen. It didn't happen at the place. It happened at the after party because we still not a party because okay. we're from North Jersey. What? I bet Our Mike what's his name don't talk like that. What's I that? I bet Mike the waiter doesn't talk like that. Shout out to, to Mike L and the rest of yeah. No, that would I think that would be too easy. Let's just say <laughs> M. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, have you ever been to a high school reunion? No, I've missed my own high school reunion several times, and uh, what's funny is that my best friend came in from across the world really? to go, but I didn't go. But it's good because she graduated and I didn't, so technically I shouldn't go. Well, from high school uh, you graduated. Not my first high school. And I don't know if they hold uh, reunions for the old city as class, as most of us they have go probably to, been incarcerated. They go to scan your, <laughs> your student ID to get in and... Boop, it says boop, it's, it says boop, here invalid, you still invalid. you still owe us six credits <laughs> and a book from the library entitled. No, I didn't take any. No, out. Okay. I didn't take any out from the Hunter Library. Oh. I, I'm sure I did. I just kept. I just returned them. <laughs> <laughs> I thought there'd be a good book title that you could steal, like you know, how to scoop bagels or. Hey, Amen. I haven't either. I, I 
the the first I guess the the ten year one was the one that the, was the big recruitment. You know, people were like, "Oh, you should right, come." You right, should come. but the Challenger exploded that day, so you couldn't make it. Oh boy! Oh boy! That's a good. That's a really good. Thirty eight old joke. Dig. Thirty thirty nine forty four. The first old joke of the episode. Dig. Wow, that was a good. And I made a fat yeah. joke right before that. All right, so we'll see. Did you make a fat joke? You the did. smoothies part, you know. You, it's like, uh, that's yeah. indirect. It's not, yeah, that's indirect. That's not like well, you had two, making a fat joke. You made a fat joke on yourself because right, you said you had two, two chicken franchises. Right. right. <laughs> that's uh, chicken franchise mo, I think is how they call yeah. that in the, in the business. Dos franchises de pollo. Back in the day, he uh, not only was his nickname El Pomodoro, but it was old double chicken. Do, pom- dos franchises. <laughs> dos, dos, dos chicken pomodoro. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, when I was, I, am, I can make those jokes, you know. I know. I am fully embracing the Mike Morona lounge mode. I don't. You, nobody's even commented, but I am almost horizontal. Oh, I know. Oh, I noted it. And mm. uh, I've never done it before, and I kind of see your point now. I get it. What? That we feel disrespected? No, that we. Uh, this is a much easier loungy mode to podcast in. Oh, My feet yeah. are up right near Danny's face. Danny's playing me off. <laughs> Nothing to be too worried about on this springtime day, except, of course, the constant overhanging threat of nuclear annihilation. Yeah, that's terrifying. And the erosion of our civil liberties, I think, is that, another. That, too, yeah. The general coarsening of the discourse. And then, yep. And uh, then. Encourage brutality against immigrants and people of color. And the women, you know, stripping uh, them of, you know. Any type of. Basic human rights. Yeah, it's not. But other than that. Other than that. We, you know, we make these really small, flat televisions that are. You 300 can, bucks you now. can roll them up and put them in your pocket that's how good they are easy and this has been <laughs> the political lullaby so that was the first use of guitar that Mike didn't really roll his eyes too big at he did look away though well, no we worked on a few before the podcast started that I was really you know chowing down on super into do you want some more maybe if I Give myself a song to sing. Uh-oh. Let me see, you're starting before I have a chance to play notes. That's, that's the only way. That's the only way to seize initiative <laughs> with you. Okay. <laughs> All right. Hold on. Hold on. I'm gonna say two, three, four, and you guys just have to start. No. 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 Come on. No, no. Okay. Okay. Ready? Two, three, four. Never saw Jeremy putting his feet up before. It's working. Never saw Jeremy sober after quarter to four. He's kind of right. He's a construction worker. Takes his shoes off when he's done with work. And then he puts them up on his couch. He reaches into his tobacco pouch and rolls himself a rolly. It's a rolly. Jeremy died of cancer later that winter. <laughs> okay. That's weird. <laughs> We thought that it was <laughs> in remission, <laughs> but it had pincers. And the ghost of me started bothering Mike every night when he laid his head down to sleep. I said, put those feet out of my face, you ghostly specter. The loungy ghost. The loungy ghost. The loungy ghost. Such a relaxed ghost. I'm in a mode where I'm super loungy. This, also, I'm a ghost. This ghost could be in a motel. You don't know when you see the ghost if he's resting uh-huh. or if he's one of the most narcoleptic ghosts in the city. That ghost, it sure acts shitty when he's around you. He's haunting. Two, three, four. Ghost. Loungy ghost. Oh, listen. Loungy for, ghost. For not knowing what each other, you guys were singing or playing, that's not bad. I'm giving that an eight out, eight out of ten. Oh, that's eight, Too kind. That's eight stars out of ten. Mike was so into it that he's now checking his email. Texts. <laughs> He says, what can I do to not do that again? Oh, I was just, uh, I was preemptively disavowing it. And I was like, before this wow. is even released, I was saying that that was not me and it was a fake. <laughs> right on Twitter. Right, oh, the right people. Twitter. Yeah, it's my, it's my way of bypassing the whole mainstream media and just getting directly to the people. Ab. We've, we're here on the 15th hole and uh, Jeremy cites a uh, particularly difficult lie. Um, I don't know how he'll be able to hit this golf shot with his feet up on the couch, but we remain 
hopeful. He has won several seniors tournaments this year. <laughs> okay. <laughs> 44, <Yeah>. 37. <laughs> <laughs> And how about you, Dan? Have you ever thought about doing like sports commentating as a as a job? Did you go to sports commentating fantasy camp? I didn't. I didn't do any of that. I I don't what? know how you can do that. I would. I think I could do baseball. Baseball is the one I feel like I could do. I just because punch, there's just like just so much Keith stuff that you head. have in front of you that you can just start talking, and then your co your co man starts saying dumb stuff, and yeah. you give him a dirty look. Yeah, then Keith Hernandez just, starts know. talking about how he got uh, wild uh, on his break uh, training, uh, and you're just like, <laughs> shut up. <laughs> I did this Just for Men commercial back in 85. Yeah, I'm more of a Ron Darling fan, to be honest. Me too. Yeah, like but Ronnie. I, uh, Harvard, I Hawaii. I don't think I could do it. I think that would be a... Uh, um, Mostly because people, be were, people would be saying... Hockey is the most rough. Well, Hockey people would is be the saying, hardest one to do. You're, you're a TV star. You're a movie star. What are you doing commentating? You don't know any. You don't bring anything to the game. Oh, I love, I love that when I post stuff political stuff on Twitter and I get yo just stick to being funny or just stick to playing music like don't tell us how to do it it's like or, um, or, or just one of those I mean it could be either one they're like could, lose, they, the they could, bro. They could, yeah. <laughs> lose the hyphens bro lose the hyphens stick stick to writing sketch comedy doing podcasts and touring uh, touring with several different bands and touring with three to five different outfits a year I did see one comment was uh, was uh, don't don't Make sure and check out Danny's comedy. Did you, oh, did you see it? What for the, was list, that? That for was the listener? Sort of, were you holding up quotes air around quotes, the around yeah. quotes, yes, uh-huh. around the word comedy? Mm. But I can't remember what hey. that was in reference to. But I think it was a political. It thing was definitely yeah. It was off. yeah. It's okay. That's fine. That helps me weed out people that I don't give a shit that they know what. <gasps> wow. What? what? That right. was me. I made that comment. I don't. I don't freaking care. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> okay. if. It's, if you're you're entitled to have your opinion and and engage in discussion, but like, there's no re- like. I've noticed that almost every time that someone like comes at me in that way, or like I'll ask them to say something, like in return, and they're like, oh, "I don't, you know, you don't, I don't, you don't get to tell me what to do." It's like you don't get to fucking push your agenda on me, man. I've, I've noticed yeah. that eighty five percent people know what's going on. A full eighty five percent of the negative comments have come from four different accounts. Balls of Fire, Jeremy B. Ballin, <laughs> Ohio Avenger, Loungy Ghost, and Loungy Ghost. It's like all four of them have have just really zeroed so in weird. on you yeah, for I some, don't... and it's just since the election. I don't and get Texas, it. Texas, there's a Texas guitar in 1977 that I really. Get, How could we're, 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 we were born in the year of the snake? We're brothers. How could you do this to my TV brother, bro? I'm born in 77. Greatest year for punk rock ever. 77. Yeah. yeah. To explain. And plus, any of the rock stars that were born in 1950 that were really good died that year. That's right. <laughs> at age 27. So why is 77 a good punk rock year? It was the year punk rock broke, bro. Pretty much. Is it? Yeah. Well, you had the, you had the clash before that, but... But it was the Ramones year? The big Ramones year? First, first Ramones record, yes. And uh, television... That was February eighth, nineteen seventy seven. Second Mark Ramones, second Ramones record. Yes, yeah, second Ramones record. Third Ramones record. No, <laughs> um, the records were like thirty two minutes. So. No, it's just the, everything was going down that year. That's when when punk it's magazine the punk broke. broke. Yeah, yes, exactly. As Mike would say, or in Sonic Youth as well. See, I thought that Gerard would be born on my birthday, but I guess I had sex later than my parents did. You really should have planned it out a little better. I hope you I really don't have plans than your parents did. Yeah, no, because if we were having sex at the same would, time, it would have been be so weird, yeah. Two double beds. <laughs> when um two double beds and when you put them together, they're the matrimonial bed. Listen, two twin beds when you go into grand, my grandma's room, she just has the one twin bed now, but she and grandpa used to have two twin beds. So yeah. the room is like oddly roomy now <laughs> because there's only one twin bed there. Yeah. That makes me a little sad. It happens. It is. It's a weird thing that when you get older, sometimes that you want to just sleep by yourself. As you get older, I mean, I mean, I, that my grandparents were the same way. Where they switched, they each had a separate bedroom. Like Bert and Ernie, or no, Bert and Ernie shared, didn't they? They're in the same room, but they had different beds. Different beds, right? Yeah, they had their own rooms at that point. Yeah, like, I think it takes real confidence. You know what I mean? Yeah. So either confidence in yourself and your mate. Yeah. Confidence yourself to say, I don't, you know, 
Dan shaking his head. I have a couple. For the list, I have a friend. Listener. I have a friend, uh, and he and his girlfriend. They they're saving themselves for marriage. I understand. No, no, they don't. They just don't like. They don't really sleep in the same bed. They have. There's an extra room in their apartment, and she goes in there, and he stays in his room. Oh, I figured that was like the sex room, and then they went to neutral no, corners. No, no, no. You would think that, right? <laughs> neutral I mean, corner. Neutral if corner. I, if I had an extra room, that would be like the straight sex room. Then you know you'd do that as such. Yeah, but, but you live in New York that. City, where people don't have. Yeah, well, those yeah, rooms. yeah. Uh huh. That's. <laughs> Gotta go to Des Moines. Actually, I had a buddy who lived in um, in Crown Heights, not so far from you, but she, the, she had a loom room. Oh wow, she Big was into loom. weaving. Yeah. She's into weaving and had a loom room. Well, I have a podcast room, I guess. Uh, I wouldn't. I'd say that's not the only thing that happens in here. Mm, it's true. A lot of tears, a lot of crying, mm-hmm. a lot of mm. sheeny sweat on the forehead of a guitar playing Dan Tamborelli. No, man, I'm not. I swear, I'm not wet. Oh, maybe a little bit. Let's maybe maybe there's a little bit of moisture on my like, forehead. It's like now. those maxi pad commercials where they hold, you know, they they <laughs> yeah, yeah. they dunk absorbent things in things that have nothing to do with bodily fluids, and they say, "Look, look." <laughs> it's not helpful. Please don't please don't dunk my my commercial tampons in blue water. It doesn't make me feel soothed. I don't have tampons. Okay, I had I did have to clean out the uh, the medical box at work the other day. What the the first aid kit or no the one that you carry? <laughs> no, the first aid kit. Which the, the one at the stage or the one that the props carry? The one that on the truck, yeah, that we carry. Uh, but because so it broke, ancient. it fell off the shelf and just snapped a hole in it. But the, from disuse. Yeah, but now you can't. We can't give first aid to anybody because that's a union position. For the that's listener, job security. Jeremy's feet are dangerously getting close. very close to me. But they don't smell. I don't, smell it. I don't. No, get. Come just on, man. If they no. Smell. If they smell, no. I'll move them. For, no. the, just, for the listener, they, no. the no. the UPMs don't always hire medics. So right, there's a lot of times when there's not a medic on set, and uh, I don't feel particularly safe just knowing that this guy who podcasts in his bare feet is going to hand me a Band-Aid and say, here you go. I survived right. a brain tumor. Right. Suck right. it up. Right. <laughs> is that how you approach people that ask you for Band-Aids? Usually, I feel like the props, the props will give out hand warmers, sunscreen, and that's, you know. I wouldn't even do that anymore, though. I, they would. Yeah, in the, yeah. Pa- in the in past. past. In the yes. past. And then and still jobs. smaller things. Exactly. Yeah, still on jobs where people do things the yeah. right way. Exactly. Well, gents, this has been a, uh, a fun journey into the minds of you two infinite children. But and so uh, there's one uh, there's one mysterious part of the record that we haven't unearthed, and it has to do with a particular weather formation. Weather formation. I'm really trying to go out strong there, guys. Called what? Thunder Thunder. Oh, it's it's a uh, it's a rare wow. con- it's a rare condition when the lightning flashes so fast that you don't see it that you just ins- assume that thunder struck twice. And we named it after that after doing a uh, a quest to the Midwest where we learned nothing at all. Thunder, 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 thunder. thunder. Thunder, thunder. First aid, don't ask for me. I don't have your band-aids. Sunburn, I don't really care. Why aren't you tan already? I killed him with a t-shirt gun. I shot him with a t-shirt gun, point blank, yeah. He died with that sun in his eyes and he said... It was a thunder, thunder. Thunder. It was a thunder, thunder. The thunder. Cause of death was T-shirt gun to the chest. It was a bruise and a contusion. It was a grand illusion that T-shirts are harmless. They aren't. They really hurt. Thunder. 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 <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, thanks for listening. That was uh, that's not Thunder Thunder. That was a, a spinoff uh, beca- called uh, Dark Web- Clouds, Dark Clouds. 
Um, and uh, the weather tree to do <laughs> with Thunder Thunder. Thunder Thunder uh, will perform much better when LLC. you see them live. LLC. Yes. Uh, but yeah, thanks for listening. Danny, play us out. The Adventures of Danny and Mike stars Danny Tamborelli and Michael C. Marona. The show is produced by Jeremy Bailey. The podcast is part of the Feral Audio Podcasting Collective and can be found on their website at feralaudio.com. For more information on the guys, visit our website at dannyandmike.com. Also, look us up on Twitter at Danny and Mike with the N spelled out and on Facebook at facebook.com slash the adventures of Danny and Mike. Thanks for listening. 